Why do you feel the way you feel? Postpartum depression for short is PPD. It's a type of mood disorder that affects some women after childbirth. It's, it is characterized by persistent feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and lack of interest or joy in activities that were once enjoyable. PPD can make it challenging for a new mother to care for herself and a baby. Hiya, welcome back to another video. So, if you are watching me for the first time, um, my name is Adiron Kadeduni. But welcome to Adiduni Space. Postpartum care refers to the medical and emotional attention provided to a woman after childbirth. It encompasses various aspects, including physical recovery, emotional well being, and support for adapting to motherhood. Now, the key components include um, postpartum complication, assistance with breastfeeding, guidance on postpartum exercise, and emotional support for the new mother. The goal is to ensure a smooth transition to motherhood while addressing specific needs and challenges arising after childbirth. Now that we understand what postpartum care means, that it's all about the support a, mo a new mother should get after having a child. What is postpartum depression? Postpartum depression is PPD for short. It's a type of mood disorder that affects some women after childbirth. It's characterized by persistent feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and a lack of interest or joy in activities that were once enjoyable. PPD can make it challenging for a new mother to care for herself and a baby. Rapid drop in estrogen and progesterone after birth can contribute to mood swings. We know that hormonal changes plays a huge role in um, postpartum depression. PPD for short, regime and progesterone after childbirth could cause a lot of changes in our body, you know, cause us to go to have other feelings. Now we are going to talk about the history of depression. A history of depression has to do with a personal or family history of depression, anxiety or other mental issues increases the risk of PPD. So if the family has the history of postpartum depression or mystery of health and uh, mental health and um, they have anxiety, all these things can really contribute contribute to your um, postpartum depression so because it's coming down from your family history down and it's passing down to you so all these things can also play a role in postpartum depression now let's look at stressful life events especially when during pregnancy and before pregnancy, all these things can contribute to postpartum depression. So what do I mean by life event? Significant life stressors such as financial difficulty, relationship problems or complicated pregnancy or delivery can contribute to postpartum 
depression so we can know that some event before pregnancy or after pregnancy or during pregnancy worrying about your baby is it kicking or your relationship factors and you know a lot of things can contribute to postpartum especially during i stand with the fact that during pregnancy a woman i stand with our mothers when they say this is when a woman needs the biggest support most you understand so it's very very important that your sister your cousin your wife pregnant around you has to have a rest of mind you make sure they are make sure you support them make sure you are not doing things that aggravate their you know their feelings or hunger you know especially right now they are going to mood through a lot of hormonal changes and they will be going through a lot of symptoms so please give them all the support they can need during pregnancy and after lack of su support insufficient emotional support from partner family or friends insufficient support from family um friends can and also partner your husband your boyfriend your friends can contribute can contribute to um ppd postpartum depression so lack of support in this manner can contribute to it also now let's talk about sleep deprivation so when you don't have sleep when you don't sleep the way you sleep when you lack sleep it will contribute to postpartum depression so what do i mean by sleep deprivation the demands of caring for a newborn can lead to sleep deprivation which is known to impact mood you that are not breastfeeding or having a baby if you don't sleep for like three days straight you'll be affected you'll be having the symptoms you'll be feeling unwell that you'll be you'll be complaining that you need to sleep right now talk more of a mother a newborn mother that is going through a lot of projection or hormonal changes in her body after having a baby that everything has to come back to normal she needs to produce milk and she's not getting the no, a good sleep because she needs to attend to a baby can affect her mental health can really affect her so much so the reason why uh, i personally believe that when a mother your sister and girlfriend or boyfriend uh, sorry girlfriend uh brother wife any just give them you know support that's more big to do with support especially that now, even if you are going to work if you can come back in the night just go and care for them that night sleep is very important for everyone especially a mother that midnight sleep is very important even during the day it's not as it's not as enough as that night sleep where your body needs to relax is very important now, Planned pregnancy or parenting that was unplanned. Let's just say pregnancy that was unplanned or feelings or being unprepared for parenthood. When a woman just had the baby, even if she's married, even if she has been waiting years, the, the feeling suddenly appear. Like, why did I even have this child? Am I even ready? Why am I even giving this baby my breast? like why is this baby sucking for me why is my body like this why is my belly like this all those things can contribute to postpartum depression why do i even have a kid now why do i have this child now oh this child is crying too much i don't want this child so all those feelings can also contribute to postpartum depression now let's talk about the complications during pregnancy or childbirth complication during pregnancy or childbirth difficulty during pregnancy or childbirth include medical complications and traumatic experiences can increase the risk of postpartum depression so all the childbirth complications um, pregnancy complications can really 
puts you at fix for postpartum depression and um, many times all these things are from traumas that you go through during, during childbirth and pregnancy you understand maybe you have tear you have six sections emergency section <coughs> you have tear or you know hemorrhaging stuff like that all the things can you know contribute to your postpartum depression because so your bodies are the one telling are the one let's go deep into the symptoms of postpartum depression how to know that you are really depressed or you are going through postpartum depression and it won't last forever there is always uh, a stop to things like this but at the moment you need to understand you need to know why you're feeling the way you're feeling you need to know why you're having this complication so the symptoms for you to know uh, you're having postpartum depression so symptoms of postpartum depression Number one, persistent sadness. Mm. Feeling consistently sad, overwhelmed, or having a sense of emptiness is one of the feelings or the symptoms of postpartum depression. Let's talk about fatigue, extreme tiredness, and difficulty sleeping. Even when the baby is sleeping, you don't want to sleep. Yes, those are symptoms. Of postpartum depression, change in appetite, significant changes in appetite, either overeating or loss of appetite, they are contributions or symptoms of postpartum depression, irritability and anxiety, feeling anxious, restlessness or irritable, consistent worrying about the baby's well-being is one of the symptoms of postpartum depression. Oh, professionals to check you complain to them this video this is not in any way to you know help you get better but just for you to have some ideas and understand postpartum depression please go to your medical um, practitioner they are the one in best position to help you out thank you I would like to talk about lack of interest. Lack of interest is one of the um, symptoms of postpartum depression. When you lack interest, when you lose interest in many activities that you like once, like there, there was a time uh, in my own life that I lost interest going out i lost interest in going out i lost interest in so many things that i loved to do before baby i love interest in you know um associate socializing with others i lose so much interest so yeah lack of interest you lose interest in so many th activities so many things you do before you understand even food you will lose in you may lose interest in some food that you love eating before you know these are one of the symptoms that you need to know. Feeling of guilt or worthlessness. Expressing intense guilt or feeling of worthlessness, particularly about not being a good mother or not being good enough. Those are one of the symptoms of postpartum depression. Another symptom that I would love to share is difficulty bonding. Oh my god, struggling to bond with the baby, which can lead to withdrawal from families and friends. This is one of the things a lot of women go through, and many are not coming out to say it, but I'll say to you right now that I also experienced this. I'll be sharing my story later on. I also experienced this. I lost a lot of interest bonding with my baby especially my daughter she cries a lot and that really affected me mentally i have to cope i have to adjust i have to be strong for her but i wasn't able to bond until she was probably a year to two years old that's when i was able to bond adjust to everything no now she's no more crying she's um, independent she can do a lot of things that's when I started bonding teaching her a lot of things you know we do things together even in fact our bond started now that she's six years old we started having lots of relationship now that she's six years old uh, we started having lots of 
you know love as mother and daughter same goes to my son and you know my son was a pretty much earlier i was able to bond probably at uh Maybe a year or six months I was able to bond with him because he was a very quiet child but for my daughter oh my goodness you need to see the way this baby cries for, for like a week I wasn't sleeping so all these things make me withdraw you know I couldn't bond with my own child until she's she's a year to two years old that she's um, independent and then I was pregnant again all the things made me withdraw but I can tell you now that we had we are having the best relationship in fact she's my best friend right now I wish I'm grateful I begin to look into her eyes before I can't look into her eyes I begin to look into her eyes and I feel the sensation the love you know same goes to my son they can be naughty sometimes but I love them began to realize how much I love those children you know so yes these are one of the symptoms that you will you know go through actually uh, um, the bonding part of all mothers and many mothers are not willing to you know come out to speak about it this that I'm speaking about yeah I've had a lot of mothers that are my friends that I told them when I see the asymptom, I know that you are going to depression. And I said, no, no, actually African mother, Nigerian mothers. But they no, I'm fine. No, you are not fine. I've gone through it. I am not going to hide my mouth. I'm going to speak out for you all mothers, really African mothers, to know the symptoms, to understand the symptoms. Our mothers, our grandmothers understand all the things. The reason why they always ask us to come home when in time we are pregnant, especially when we are married to come so that they can take care of us so yeah I can tell you the bony part is is one of the symptoms that I went through because there was no support there was no support from anywhere except my husband and sometimes he has to go out I have to be alone with the kids so these things really affected me but I'm grateful right now that we are fixing that I hope everything is fixed and perfect symptoms some women may express physical symptoms like headaches stomach aches without a clear medical cause yes I, I, I went through this it is important to note that PPD is a serious condition that requires professional help if someone is experiencing symptoms or if you suspect some women might have uh, postpartum depression encourage them to seek medical support which I did in my own case so a professional will be able to diagnose a treatment you know be able to diagnose and treat the symptom please if you see please if you see any woman going through this around you please figure it out call her attention you know and let the ask her to go to a doctor so that she'll be diagnosed and be treated and most of the times not all her medical you know i can't really say much mine i got better naturally after like two years i I began to feel myself. I still have the symptoms here yeah, and there, probably something just worrying me. But I can see the difference now to when my kids were babies and growing up, walking, crawling. You no, know, I feel better now. I do things that I love to do. I can go out anytime. You know, it's not easy not having a lot of support from friends and family yes it causes postpartum depression and i can tell you for sure that i went through it i'm not going to hide it you are going if you are going through it and please you notice it from all this like you could tell from this list of symptoms please go to your medical perfectionists and I'll let them rule this house and let them help you with treatment so this is where I'm going to stop right now so um, our next we're going to talk about more on postpartum depression and how to get treatment uh, what's the treatment that you'll be giving and how your family can support you so we're going to have more discussion on this topic so thank you so much for watching